What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and I'm here to declare the content updates for Halo are just a mess. If you don't know, 3 for 3 had announced that we are no longer getting standard seasonal updates, and we are now transitioning to the content updates going forward. Now, I want to be honest with you. I'm not really much of a fan. I have put roughly 1,300 hours into Halo Infinite, and I've been covering this game since day one on the channel. So I've seen it through its best moments and its absolutely dog shit moments. In the last year, 3 for 3 has been killing it in the seasonal releases of this game, but with the new transition to content updates, most Halo fans feel that this ain't it. Let me be clear, this is not a Halo is dead or I'm done with Halo Infinite video. This is an analysis on what the hell should 3 for 3 be fixing with these updates and why are they a straight up mess? Can 3 for 3 change the tides of how Garo these content updates are perceived by the community? Can 3 for 3 build live service content that actually feels fulfilling let's go invisible in some random hallways overpay on shop prices and jump right into this i'm gonna be blunt with you. this cu 29 update pretty much sucks if you think about what we're getting is basically one map customizable shoulders forge updates and a more expensive store what the fuck is this piece of shit i've seen better updates from Redfall, and that's saying something. Don't get me wrong, this map illusion is pretty interesting setup. With three lane nature to auto invisibility anywhere in the middle, that's pretty different compared to anything we've seen up to this point. But to only give one map? Oh, that's real nice. I mean, the customizable shoulders was definitely a great touch to see, but it's like we're finally getting something in Halo Infinite that we've had in nearly every Halo game that was ever created. Way to go, guys. You finally pulled it off. I can only give you kudos to a certain degree, but when you add something that was always a part of the game, it's like that meme where you're just settling for a third place trophy. No new weapons or equipments. No new updates to playlist. Ranked is still broken. I mean, it's almost like a completely different company is doing this update compared to what we saw in year two of the game. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that they're making this a transition game into the next Halo title, but this is a complete 180 compared to what we just saw just a few months earlier. I'm not sure if something from up above, like from Phil Spencer or Microsoft said, hey, just move on to the next game and leave this damn thing alone. That would make more sense compared to what just randomly doing this out of nowhere. I mean, this is the equivalent of season one of the Halo show. Lots of potential, looked great from the trailers, but once you get into the product firsthand, it's just bad. What I think is the main reason this update hit so hard is mainly because a lack of or a continued failure of communication from the part of 3 for 3. I mean, since day one, I can remember they provided half-truths like, you aren't going to be locked behind a paywall, or this will be on the levels of Halo Reach with customization. So that was a f***ing lie. And on day one, we only had maybe 10 armor pieces to change up for most of our cores. And basically all armor was, you guessed it, locked behind a seasonal pass or the store itself. When your shop is more efficient and is updated more often than the game itself, you know, you fucked it up. But since then, 3 for 3 was getting better at communication, but it always felt like they took a step forward and took two steps back. Year two was definitely different. It had every aspect we wanted and seemed like it was running consistently. Then this update felt like not only did it take a step back, but then it proceeded to fall headfirst into a wall. I watched the entire live stream discussing the content update, and from what I heard, we were supposed to get new big team battle maps. But I don't know about you, but I don't see them anywhere. They aren't clear when it will arrive and for how long they'll stick around for. And that's the most infuriating aspect about 3 for 3. They give you hope or hype for something, but due to how they speak, they could be completely wrong for what you're thinking. I don't want to feel like I'm talking to the Riddler and have to piece together phrases in the hopes that the real message is clear. I'm not that smart to do that every time. Communication is key for any dev to see consistency, and this CU Update 29 does not hit that at all. Now, the magic question of the day is whether 3 for 3 actually has the ability to fix these problems going forward, and it all starts with content. I know the multiplayer lead had left the company months ago, which definitely did cause speculation on why the game is lacking any more real updates, but I feel like this is part of a weird strategy. Due to leaks from many insiders, it was said that 3 for 3 had finished content updates from seasons 6 to 8, so where the hell are these seasons? I honestly think they're using the content from the remaining things that they created to then be used in these operations going forward. I could be a complete moron and may be wrong, but why were all these leaks saying this content is done heading to its third year if there wasn't smoke in that direction. The goal should be to take what remaining content they have and create roughly around 12 to 15 updates 
that provide us content heading into April of next year. That way, if rumors are true, that they may already be in development of the next Halo title, which we could be seeing more of that heading into next year anyway. And honestly, by doing this, it actually would help this company feel like they actually are consistent with some options going forward with its updates. At least if this happens, fans can expect things to be dropped a lot more consistently rather than having to hope that something will drop this day or not. I think a roadmap for the year would actually help alleviate fears that this game is over once you really just start to finally get going. Any vehicles or weapons that you already have created should be released as soon as possible so that this game doesn't feel like a joke. I think right now 3 for 3 is at a crossroads. They have probably one of the best feeling Halo games we've had in years, probably since Halo 3. This feels like a real spiritual successor to the Bungie titles that we've always wanted since Halo Reach was dropped. Don't get me wrong, Halo Reach was a very fun game, but it was a definitely completely different feel than we saw from the previous game in Halo 3 itself. We have more maps in this Halo game compared to any other Halo game that we've had in the past. We have full customization on par with Reach, and I honestly feel very good about Halo Infinite as a whole at this point in time compared to what I saw in the first release date. And I know that if they continued to expand, it would only get better and better each time we jumped into a new update. I feel like the biggest thing that 343 can do at this point is, as I mentioned before, make this a transition game to Halo 7. But that doesn't mean to just completely ditch any sort of support for the game because that just means that you really don't care as much about making the fans feel that this was a complete experience. And most importantly, communication is key because it's meant to build trust, not just for Halo Infinite, but for beyond. If 343 thinks that this is the best way to communicate with your audience that they are going to invest in projects that you are playing heavily, then why should we trust them on anything? Halo Infinite started out as one of the worst games in the multiplayer space, comparing itself to Battlefield 2042 and Call of Duty Vanguard when it was first dropped. But then it consistently added updates on a daily, and now we see this game as being one of the probably better live service multiplayer games on the market at this point. From that perspective, it then just takes a complete U-turn and falls right on its face in its first real update in its third year. This needs to be that transition game that gets fans excited for the next Halo project, but until we get information about Halo 7, it's best that we get content to keep fans around. And whether or not Halo will be jumping across multiple different platforms and consoles, you need to develop a consistency that can make fans happy to jump into the next Halo game and just be excited that they're part of the ride. You should be adding content as much as possible and just getting fans excited to say that Halo is alive and well and you should be a part of this journey going forward. So when I look at CU29, it is definitely a flash in the pan of how bad an update could be, especially heading into your third year. Season five being considered one of the best updates of Infinite so far, and then heading into one of your worst updates ever is kind of a very surprising and unforeseen circumstance. But this should not be the end of Halo Infinite because of the fact that this is actually a pretty solid game to play and I feel like more content can just bring more fans back to the game itself. But 3 for 3, you have a simple decision to make here. You either can add content to the game and keep it going until the next Halo title releases or you can turn around and just let it die and crumble to ash. But what do you think about the CU updates? Are you excited to see how these operations will play out for the rest of the game? Are you angry that these are the new consistent update packages that 343 is delivering let me know what you think in the comments below if you like this type of content make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel till next time this is marsman signing off peace out guys